We are on the record with file 23517-FC. Could you state your name for the record, please? I'm sorry. Could you state your name for the record, please? Yes, Glenn Anthony Davis. Thank you. Good morning to this honorable court. Attorney Carla Marable, P number um, 62755 on behalf of Mr. Davis. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Hupakar, have you reviewed the pre-sentence report? I have, Your Honor. I have no corrections or additions to make to the pre-sentence report. Thank you. Ms. Maribel, have you had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence report? Yes, I have. Do you have any additions or corrections? Your Honor, at this time, my client would like to talk to you about the pre-sentence investigation report. All right, but you don't have any? I don't have any corrections. All right. Mr. Davis, do you have, have you had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence report? Yes, I have. And do you have additions or corrections? Yes, I do. I need page numbers so I can get there so when we talk. Okay, page number four, first paragraph. It stated that uh, I went to meet the talk with Julius. That never happened. You met me at the football game. Okay, what, the thing that is, this is what is called the narrative, and this is right from the police report, and I can't change what the police report put in, so I can't change that. At the end of it, I can put that you disagree with the narrative, okay. but I can't change anything in the narrative. Do you understand? Yes. All right. Okay, one other thing. Page? This is in the back. This is a statement from that uh, was written to Judge Mathis. I don't have a clue of who this person is. And so this is a letter, and it's Chrissa Brown. Right. Um, this is a letter that is to the court, and anybody can write a letter to the court um, for a review. Um, judge Mathis was the judge that did the preliminary examination, so that's probably why it was addressed to her. Um, I read all letters that come in. Um, if they're in from either the um, people or the defense, whatever I get, so I can't change those. Those are just letters. You're saying you don't know who it is and you don't want it included? Is that what you're saying? Exactly, because I don't, I don't, this is it really, my point of view is like implying that I was engaged in another criminal activity. That's what you say. Mr. Hubakar. I think that the victim's, victim's representative statements and the crime victim's uh, impact statement are properly included in the pre-sentence investigation and part of this record. All right, so I'm going to deny it because I can't do anything about that. It's allowed. Well, Your Honor, in this particular case, that particular letter, and I, okay, so what the prosecutor is saying, the, crime, the victims of the crime, you know, is presenting the pre-sentence investigation report. This letter is from somebody that's unknown. He's not charged with it. The court didn't have jurisdiction over this case. The case is, is just a letter from somebody who might have saw this on TV and decided to write a letter. But he never been charged with it. I don't even think there's even ever been investigation into it. Um, so it's, it's a letter from some unknown person about something that there never was investigation in. There never was a, um, he was never, you know, indicted on it or charged with it. And I don't even think the police know who she is. So that's why he's objecting to it being part of the official record when it has nothing to do with the case. I guess I don't know exactly which page they're talking about. I was looking at the statement that was sent to the victim's representative. Do you have a page number? No, no this is an out, okay, this is an outside okay. letter. Hold on one second. Was... If you look all the way to the end, it's a Chrissy Brown from Kalamazoo, and it is to the Honorable Judge Paula Mathis, and it's the state versus Glenn Davis. Um, there is also behind that is the victim impact statement. They're saying this letter is from somebody about a whole different case. I don't have an objection case. with that, Judge. I was talking about the victim impact statement, which is the page that follows that. Yeah. Yeah. The victim impact statement is, by law, it goes with the information. 
But this particular letter is, he never was charged with it. There's never we'll, investigation. We'll take yeah. it out. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, yeah, nope, I'll get to uh, you. Any, uh, any changes no, for no, the pre? All right, thank you. Anything to say before sentencing? Yes, Judge, I do have a letter uh, to read to the court from Julius Muhammad, uh, the son of uh, the deceased in this case. <coughs> My dad was the first man I ever loved. He was more than a father to me. He was everything. Everyone is telling me to be strong and keep my head up, but you all see that the impact my dad had made on this community and the hearts and minds of people across the world. People that only meet with him for a short period of time are sad and crying, so imagine how broken I am. I had him my entire life. The older he got, the wiser he became, and so as he grew, I and we grew together. He could call me and ask for advice, and he would always say, son, I'm learning so much from you. Look at my son, Big Bad Faircon, when in reality he was listening to himself because the words that flow from my voice are his words, just in a more up-to-date version. I would always tell him, you need some me time because he always had a child with him. <clears throat> I would call him on his free weekends and ask, what are you doing? And he would be like, well, I decided to get the boys. I'd be like, uh, are you serious? See, my dad loved his family. He would come visit me and take his grandchildren and they would go and come back all happy and excited. When you would ask what, what y'all, what did y'all do? They would say they went to the library or went for a walk in the park or I did something so simple but so amazing. I'm going to end with this because I can't talk all day about my father. The tears that run down my cheek today are tears of joy. My dad, Julius Muhammad, was a soldier and feared no man, and he was not afraid of death because he was life. He will forever be in our hearts and our minds and truly be missed. Continue to do your part to, in the community and my siblings to keep moving the way you do and he will forever be, and he will live forever through us. Never forget Julius Casey Muhammad. Uh, aside from the statement that was made uh, by the victim uh, representative in this case, Judge, I do have a number of sentencing matters that don't address the PSI but are largely for appellate purposes. Would you like those addressed now? I think that they probably make the most sense to address. Yes. Uh, the people are aware of the numerous phone calls that have been made by the defendant in this case to high-ranking gangster disciple members throughout the United States in an attempt to try to subvert justice and uh, undermine the credibility of the witnesses in an effort to secure an appeal under People versus Youngblood. The people at the time of this trial were aware of no exculpatory information, nor do we uh, have any exculpatory information at this point as it relates to any of the individuals who testified in this case. We are aware that the defendant uh, has had numerous contacts with Joseph Ezell and Brittany Bowlby and DeAndre Johnson, all individuals who uh, were attempting to discredit Dondrell, uh, uh, Dondrell Thomas, who was a crucial witness in this case by applying or suggesting that the people are aware of his gang membership. The court is aware that being a gang member does not prevent somebody from being a witness in this case. Quite frankly, the people intend on submitting uh, as an appellate exhibit uh, numerous phone calls that were, that were made by the defendant to individuals within this community as well as individuals throughout the country trying to gain additional information to discredit Dondrell Thomas as it relates to the defendant's appellate rights, the people were uh, not aware of any information that needed to additionally be provided to defense counsel at the time of this trial, nor now, uh, which would bear on the defendant's credibility beyond the defendant's, uh, beyond Mr. Uh, Thomas's statements, Andrew Thomas's statements. Furthermore, the witnesses that were called by defense uh, in, in that Marva, was called by defense during the course of this trial, and it was uh, 
additional information has been learned by the prosecution subsequent to her testimony in that the defendant had deeded to her a house prior to her testimony, um, which the people suggest would influence her testimony and provide a bias that would further favor the prosecution's suggestion that she was providing false alibi. Ultimately, the jury came to the same conclusion that the defendant was providing false alibi. Um, given that the defendant was convicted of first degree murder, we know what the sentence will be as is required by law. The remainder of this argument is placed on the record for appellate purposes. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Ms. Maribel, anything you'd like to say before sentencing? Yeah, my client, um, he believes that he's innocent. He um, wants to address the court about his innocence, and he does plan to appeal this particular conviction, which is his legal right. Um, I'm unaware of, about any phone calls or anything. The, um, this morning was the first time that I had heard about it, but I also think that sometimes phone calls are taken out of context. Um, people put certain meaning to them, and that's not even what they um, what they mean. So at this time, my client would like to address the court. I believe. Thank you, and Mr. Davis, would you, do you have anything to say before sentencing? Yes, I do. Um, first of all, do you mind if I speak to what he was speaking of? You may. Um, I don't suggest that. If it's going to appeal court, I do not suggest that you you, you do that. No address the issue of the trial. Okay. Well, all right. Um, the issue Good advice. With, okay. Well, the issue with the trial is um, the state put a witness up and he raised his hand and said that he was being truthful and honest and he wasn't part of a gang. And I submit to the court today, whether it's you, the prosecutor, whoever want to do it, look at this Instagram, Facebook page, and you will find that he got up there and told a flat out tale. Um, his Instagram page is 42 Jarell, D R E L M, and it shows him engaging in gang activity and what they claim that the gangster disciple. These are people that approach me with the information. I didn't seek them out, they sought me out. We're talking about that issue. All right, okay. Um, what I want to address the court on first before I get into uh, this here, I want to give my heartfelt condolences, belated condolences to the family of Mr. Muhammad uh, and his loved ones and friends. Uh, I can't say to them that I know how they feel because everyone have a different relationship with the person that they hold uh, close and near and dear. So uh, my heart goes out to them uh, for their loss. And I want them to know that. However, I'm going to say this, and it's not to take anything away from what I just said. The state got the wrong person for this for this crime. Uh, with that said, you know, I want to make an oral motion, if I, if I may. Uh, Motion to motion for a directed verdict for you to authorize your uh, um, discretion. Uh, motion for a directed verdict uh, to uh, set aside the jury uh, verdict. Mr. Davis, your attorneys did that at the time of trial. Um, I denied that then, and because you do have an attorney, you can't make motions like that. So. Even, 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 if, even if I feel that the verdict didn't um, coincide with the evidence that the prosecutor put on it? Correct. Even if you don't believe that, because your attorneys, your attorney did that for you at the time that it was proper to be done, mm -hmm. you can't come back and do it again yourself because it's already been done, it's already been denied. Okay. Well, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. As to charge three and charge four, two years to two years at the Michigan Department of Correction, 
with 448 days credit, $136 state charge. As to charge two, 76 months to 50 years at the Michigan Department of Correction. That must be consecutive to charge three and four, but it will be concurrent with charge one. Charge one is life without the possibility of parole. And that must, zero credit for any time served because that must be served consecutive to and after charge three and concurrent to charge two. You have the right, you have the um, absolute right to appeal because this was a jury verdict. If you cannot afford an attorney, one would be appointed for you at public expense. You have 42 days from today's date to appeal. Probation, did I miss anything? Um, just the $130 CBR, Your Honor. Thank you. That's a $130 crime victim fund. Judge, we also have a restitution amount uh, for the crime victim's compensation fund. Of? Of $5,000, Judge. And, and Your Honor, and I do understand that in all criminal cases, the victim is entitled to restitution, but to this day, I haven't been given any receipts or any... Um, any receipts to see what it's for. So before the court um, imposed restitution, I asked that the prosecution give me a receipt and I would talk to Mr. Davis and we, we may need a hearing on that because I haven't been given anything. All right, what I will do is I'll, I'll um, put $1 as to restitution because I have to put something as to restitution. The prosecutor then will get all of the information, get that to you, and you can go over it with your client. If your client agrees, then we can stick to the amount. Otherwise, we can have a restitution hearing to be able to determine the exact amount. Okay. And I'm assuming that is for the firm home. That's correct. Okay. Anything further? Anything further, Mr. Not, nothing from people, Judge. Anything further, Ms. Maribel? No, yeah. All right, thank you. We are off the record. Mm -hmm.